So Xtool has finally done it. They've pretty much eliminated all of the main issues we've had with diode lasers in the past with this guy right here, the Xtool S1. This might be one of the most popular lasers that you can buy. We're going to get into all of its features as well as the top four reasons why I think this could be a great option for you. And as always, a quick caveat before we get going, Xtool was kind enough to send me this machine. They are not paying me to do this review, but if you do decide to pick up one of these machines from Xtool, I do get a kickback. So take that with a grain of salt as we talk about this machine. We finally have an actual enclosure. Compared to something like the Xtool, this one's dusty, D1 Pro, this is the open gantry design. So obviously there is no enclosure. This has been very popular. A lot of people have been picking this up, but there's always been that huge drawback. So having this full enclosure and lid helps to fix that problem. So let's go through the specs real quick before I give you my four big advantages of this machine and the one big drawback. So in terms of the machine, you can see this is 40 watts. They actually have interchangeable modules. You can both get a 40 and a 20 watt laser diode module, which is just going to have a different number of laser diodes inside, as well as a two watt IR module. You're going to buy that if you're wanting to do something with metal that's going to be able to engrave directly on it. It's going to work with a different wavelength. In terms of the speed, we're looking at 600 millimeters per second, which definitely puts it at the top end in terms of these diode machines, but it's not the absolute top end that you can find with diodes. And then especially once you jump into CO2s, you're going to see those potentially in the 900 and up millimeter per second range. Now this enclosure now means this is a class one laser. It has some pretty cool safety features we'll talk about here in a second. But even with that enclosure, you still have a pretty substantial work area inside. And that is 19.6 by 12 0.5 inches. I've got a honeycomb bed that is an accessory that is inside of here, uh, but you can actually remove that. They give you a couple different options. So it does have a pretty good thickness in terms of the Z axis. You can also get a riser accessory that works directly with this machine. Uh, you're going to need to get that if you want to get the rotary, but we'll talk about the accessories also here in a sec. In terms of software, you're going to be able to use their own software. So the X tool creative space, uh, which really has become a nice piece of software. They have been building this out over the last several years. I remember seeing it with the original Xtool D1 uh, and it did a pretty good job, but it has come leaps and bounds, especially when they released the Xtool P2, so their CO2 laser, and a lot of those features they carry over to this. But not only can you use it with their software, you can also use it with Lightburn as well. That is my favorite piece of software and it works great. In fact, I was doing a lot of my normal test files with Lightburn directly through this machine. So everything is great. You can connect by USB as well as by Wi-Fi, but unlike the Glowforge, you don't have to be connected to the internet in order to get this thing to work. In terms of like the physical interface or buttons of this machine, you only have one, and that is this guy right here. You're gonna use that for a couple different things, but mainly you're gonna use it to be able to do the frame function to where you get a trace around whatever you're going to engrave or cut out, as well as starting the actual laser. On the back, you have fans because again, you have an enclosure. So you can actually have an exhaust system that is built in. But I didn't actually hook up the tube that it came with just because I was testing it out. Something you can't do with those open gantry designs, you have to get some type of enclosure to be able to do that. And then this guy also comes with a air assist. And the lack of this was really one of the first drawbacks with these laser diodes to start with. And then they started offering these like aftermarket designs. And then eventually they started to integrate them into the overall machine itself. Um, this still is an external unit. I do wish this was something they could include internally, but that would also bulk up the machine as a result. Uh, but this one is nice because it is controlled from the machine itself. So it will turn on and off as needed, and it can also control the intensity. And also I like that it has rubber feet, meaning that it's not going to wobble all over the place like I've had in the past. All right, so the four big advantages I see with this machine compared to everything else you see from Xtool and a lot of what you see from other manufacturers. The first is the enclosure, which we've already talked about. But outside of the obvious fact that it encloses everything that is going on, I like the lid design. Um, this is probably like a polycarbonate. 
uh, so it's not glass or anything, but it is coated. So the same thing that you're going to get with the glasses that they normally provide with these lasers, meaning that it's going to block out all the light. Also, it may not be showing up on camera as much, but this goes pretty far back. Uh, and then you also have the section in the front, meaning there's a lot of angles you can watch this from when it's doing its work. And even when I compare this to some of the CO2 machines that obviously have big enclosures and a lot of times the tops are glass, this does a really nice job just letting you see what's going on. And just like cosmetically, the green with like the matte black looks pretty cool. But a few other things that come with this is the fact that you do have a sensor from the lid that if this opens, it's going to cut power to the laser. So you cannot have this open and running. And that is a huge, thing that has always been a drawback in the past, especially now that we are getting into the 40 watt range. That is a lot of power and a lot of light that you want to protect yourself from. And obviously all of the fumes and the exhaust and all that kind of stuff is a huge advantage being able to have all that contained. A few other things they have with this on the safety side of things. There's actually an emergency stop. I don't think you can see it on the camera, but it's on the back right side. So there's a physical switch that you can push in. And there's also these little semicircle clear eye looking guys. There's five of them, three in the back, and two in the front. And these are actually fire sensors. And so it can tell if a fire is happening, it's gonna cut power to the machine as well. Um, this is the nicest implementation of this idea I've seen. Even the newer open gantry diode machines will have a sensor or two in there, uh, but these seem to be the most robust. I haven't actually tested it out to see if it works, but from the setup, this looks to be the nicest. So the enclosure is big advantage number one, and the big advantage number two is the interchangeability of the laser modules themselves. So I have the 40 watt module that is set up with this, but you can also buy this with a 20 watt module as well. I believe it's like a five to $600 difference when you upgrade to the 40 watt, but you also have the ability to add on that IR module that is about two watts. And Xtool has actually provided some IR modules in the past that you can get with their open gantry designs. Again, these are nice because you can use them to mark directly on metal. They're basically like a different wavelength with the way the laser works. So that's great that you have that option. But even if if the cost wasn't a factor to you, you might actually want to have a 20 watt module instead of a 40 or even have the option. And that's because the laser dot is going to be smaller with a 20 watt module. And that's because the power from these is generated not from a single source, like with a CO2 machine where you have a big glass CO tube on the back, but you have individual laser diodes that are shot together, they're combined and then shot and as you combine those together, the laser dot, so like physically how wide that laser dot is when it fires, gets bigger and bigger. So what that means is if you're doing fine engraving, the 20 watt module might be your better option because you don't actually need a ton of power to get the engrave effect and you're gonna have a thinner line as a result. But even at 40 watts, you still can do nice laser engraves. And the third big advantage of this machine is something it is stealing from the CO2 machines. And that has to do with this little needle right over here, which actually can take off. Uh, and this is how you are going to get focus. So this is a touch probe. It's actually spring loaded on the back uh, and it can pop off. And that's just in case it's gonna run into something as it's going so it doesn't get everything caught up. But that guy actually serves three different functions. First, it's gonna allow you to obviously get focus. Uh, most of the times the touch probe is usually the easiest as well as the best way to do it. And you can see right now kind of what the process is. It pops it down touches off and then it's gonna raise the entire module up just a little bit. And then the module is gonna to move to the back right corner where there's basically a little reset point where this just pushes back down on, locks it in, and then it's good to go. Now that focus process is compared to what we see with the Xtool D1 Pro. We have that little lever that's built into the laser module itself and you can slide it down, but then you have to physically adjust the module up and down to where you have the right focus point. This one, you don't have to do that. Now the second feature with that touch probe is it's also what you're gonna use if you're doing anything with a curved surface. This is something that's pretty unique to Xtool, uh, both on the CO2 and the diode side of things. You can basically put in any type of curved surface. So not just like a cylinder that you're gonna rotate with a rotary, but like a little bowl. Or in my case, I will just put something in there and have it like ramped up. And the software will create a grid of point and it's going to measure the distance on a Z of each of those points. So basically kind of figure out what is the shape of your material and then it can engrave as a result. So when it actually goes to especially engrave, 
it is automatically gonna move the laser up and down as it's going. And you can kind of see what that looks like inside of the software right here. And here is the example of it running when I did have that board propped up. It's kind of hard to tell, but if you look at the spring on the side of the laser module, you can see that it is going up and down as we're going side to side on the material. They have a lot of really good examples on the website of people, again, doing these with bowls where it's more pronounced, but being able to hold that focus throughout the engrave is really, really nice if you're working with anything that's going to need it like that. Now, the last feature with the touch probe has to do with positioning. So let's say you have a piece of material. You drop it in there. You have artwork inside of the software, but you need to figure out where is that artwork gonna go in relation to your material. There are a bunch of different ways to do it. X still still does it one of the most common ways, and that is with a red laser dot. In fact, it's actually a crosshair, which is a little bit more handy than just a single dot, especially if you're wanting to get things square. And so wherever that red laser dot is going to be, you can do an image trace, which will just run the laser head around the border of whatever your artwork is, and you can get it positioned from there. But it also does it a different way with the touch probe itself, where it basically takes two points on the bottom left and then the bottom right, and then you're able to see basically the rectangle or square that that creates inside of the software and place the artwork on top of it. So in this example, I was just writing ruler on this ruler, and if I wanted to figure out exactly where to get this aligned up, it's really helpful to know where this is in relation to the work bed. So that's exactly what I did. I basically found those two points, made the rectangle, put the artwork inside, and I was good to go. Now, the other way to do that visually is by an actual camera feed, and that is something this does not have. So there is no camera integration, but this is kind of the other option that they're giving you to do this. In my experience, by actually doing the physical measurement, um, that is going to be more exact than what the camera feed is going to give you. And the fourth big advantage is going to be something that Xtool has been building up over the years, and that is just the full line of accessories that they offer, where most of them will work with this machine. I've already mentioned the riser, so you're gonna get a thicker Z axis. You're gonna use that a lot of times if you're gonna be using the rotary, which again is another accessory that you can plug in directly to this machine. They also have a fire system. I'm not totally sure how that works, but there's actually a port for it in the back. That actually might be what hooks up to the sensors in the front, but they also have a exhaust filter, meaning you can take your exhaust tube directly into this unit and have it completely contained inside. And the honeycomb bed that I have in there right now is also an add-on that you can include if you want. And currently they're also saying that the air assist is a add-on as well. And right now it's actually packaged with the machine, but they're kind of advertising it as a bonus that you get with it. I hope they always include this with the machine and not just make it a separate purchase so people don't just wind up getting a 40 watt laser diode that has no air assist whatsoever, because uh, that could be super dangerous. But I could kind of see if you're using again that two watt IR module, you're really not gonna need air assist as much. You actually don't use air assist a ton if you're going to be doing engraving because it's going to give you a little cleaner engrave, but you definitely want the air assist if you're going to be doing any type of cutting with that high power laser. Oh, and one thing I have forgotten to mention is uh, it does have the work area that we already mentioned, but you can also use the conveyor belt, which is something they first came out with the P2, which extends it in the Y axis, but to like 3000 millimeters. So whatever that is converted to inches and the conveyor belt will automatically run it through the machine. So basically gives you a pass through on the front and the back. And you'd have to use that alongside of the riser to be able to get it to work. But again, that's something they brought over from the P2, which is a really cool feature. Uh, let's talk about kind of the single disadvantage that I see currently for this machine. That is the fact there is no camera. And to be honest, it's a little bit odd. Uh, I mean, I get that if you're coming from the D1 Pro, there's no camera there. The P2, which is way more expensive than this machine, does have a camera, but they're M1, so it's a, a smaller, all contained laser diode. That thing's only 10 watts. It also is a vinyl cutter. It's kind of like a Cricut plus a diode laser. That one does have a camera that is integrated. And other than just like general positioning, the camera does do some cool stuff. And we're engraving the same thing on a bunch of different things. So like if you're doing a bunch of uh, logos on name tags, you can kind of just put the name tags in there willy nilly and it will auto place all of those on there. So coming to this guy, it's a little bit surprising that the camera is not integrated. And I honestly don't even know if it's a cost thing. It might just be more of like, where would you place it in terms of how they have this thing designed. But I will say what they've done with that two point positioning with the touch probe, which they do not have on any of the other machines. And in terms of reliability, that's going to be your best bet. And actually on all of my bigger CO2 machines, a lot of those don't even have cameras 
as well, uh, because they know you're going to be using the other methods, which are going to be more accurate and more reliable at the end of the day. So for me, it's not a massive con, but if that's something that you're just expecting when you come to in a fully enclosed laser machine, you want to see a camera feed from it. Just know that's not what you're going to get from this guy. Okay, so we've talked about some of the other machines from Xtool, but let's actually compare those to the S1. So first, let's talk about the D1 Pro. Obviously, the biggest advantage is this is fully enclosed as well as that touch probe. The D1's work area could be a little bit bigger, uh, depending on how you look at it. It's basically like 15 and a half by 15 and a half inches versus the 19.6 by 12.5. But as of right now, the S1 is going to be the most powerful between the two. You can do different laser modules on the D1 Pro. They did offer a 40 watt. That's actually what's on the one I have right now. But when I just went to the website, I'm just seeing the 20 watt and sometimes the 10 watt option. So I don't even know if they are providing that anymore. So if you want 40 watts with a laser your diode, this is going to be your only option. But the D1 Pro is going to win out in terms of price. You're at about 1200 bucks for 10 watts and again, $2,000 for this 40 watt option. Okay, but what if you want to compare this to the P2? I've also done a full review of that machine. I actually have it right off camera and it's not on wheels and it's really big and heavy, so I'm not going to pull it over. And that's one of the first advantages of this machine is this, it's not like portable portable, but you can definitely pick it up and move it around if you have to. The P2 is a big machine. Once you get it in its spot, it's basically going to be there. It's pretty hard to move around. It's also much more expensive. Uh, currently at the time of this recording, it's like $4,500. So more than twice the cost of this machine. With that, you do get a nicer overall build. It's actually a metal frame um, versus like a hard plastic that you have with this guy. And the biggest difference is the fact that you're going from a diode machine to a CO2 machine. I've talked a lot about those differences in the past. I actually did a full breakdown of all the different machines that you can get if you're kind of wondering, like even what type of machine should I go to? There's a link right up there if you want to check that out. But long story short, CO2s are gonna be really great for cutting. It's also gonna let you do materials like clear acrylic or like etching on glass, which you can't do with a diode, where diode machines are really great for engraving, but you can cut thinner material especially with a 40 watt module. The PT's work area is also bigger as well, just the fact that it is a bigger machine. But when it actually comes to the software, other than the fact that the P2 has a camera, pretty much all the features are going to be the same. So that curved function that we talked about earlier, it also does that with the P2. They're just gonna use their, I think like infrared sensors to figure out the focus. And the P2 is going to be faster in terms of overall speed. But if you're like, I could get two of these units for one of the P2, the, uh, the time save start to get pretty interesting when you start to compare them directly to each other because you're able to double up what you can do with this guy. And then the last one to compare it to is the M1, which is kind of like the stepbrother of this whole line. You don't see as many people talk about this machine. I have done a full review of that one as well as you want to check it out. Um, overall, it's going to be your cheapest option, more than likely, depending on how Xtool has stuff packaged. It's usually around $1,000. It is going to be fully enclosed, so just like with this guy. But like we talked about earlier, probably the biggest thing is going to be the fact that it has that vinyl cutter. So if you're going to be doing stuff with fabric or things Things where you just cannot cut it out with a laser, then that could be a cool option, but it's only gonna come with a 10 watt laser versus either the 20 or the 40 that you can get with this one. And when you compare it to all of the machines from Xtool, it's going to have the smallest work area. It kind of feels the M1 is targeted a little bit more at the crafting audience. So those are the machines from Xtool, but you can also compare this to what we just talked about in the last video, the We Create Vision. I'm not going to go blow by blow between those two machines because there's actually another one from another company coming out very soon. And once it does, I'm going to do a full breakdown and give you my rankings. But I would love to know from you is is the uh, no camera, is that like a no-go for you? Or just finally having something that is fully enclosed with all of the features, is that gonna be a great option? So until next time, go make or break something in a shop. See you guys.